Hi, I'm Steve Clemens here doing a project for the Palestine Note and I run the foreign policy programs at a think tank called the New America Foundation. And I'm here with a man, Munib al-Masri, who when the story of Palestine is written, it can't be written without talking about how he has built capacity in this country. After the Oslo process, he helped uh, initiate and launch a major economic investment program uh, that built infrastructure, telecommunications, uh, schools, roads, etc., to try to d build a va viable economic part of the society here, uh, starting with about $170 million investment and building it into the Palestine Investment Development Company, of which he's chairman. He's also president of the Palestine Forum, and more recently and more interestingly to me, he heads the Palestinian Independent Personalities to the Cairo Reconciliation uh, process that's underway now, big news possibly. Munim, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. So being let's here. let's start out with this Cairo bit. There's there's been um, in in the United States the constant line that we that there's no partner in Palestine. That how do you deal with a Palestinian situation in which you've got a divided government? Uh, a lot of dislike in the United States for Hamas. You you've been part of the process to try. Why is this important? And why is what we see unfolding in the next few days in Cairo so critical? Well, I'm. Um I'm very optimistic that it's going to happen. Uh, I think I talked to all factions, especially Hamas and Fatah, and all of them know that without reconciliation, we cannot move ahead. And so, does Abu Mazen trust you very much? Does Khaled Mashal trust very you very much? How how do you manage that? Because they uh, difficult, yeah. but with hard work and uh, with credibility and being uh, uh, transparent and being honest and having no self-interest. It's the national interest what we're talking about. Without reconciliation, we are in a bad shape because the uh, national, the national uh, cause is in real danger. And both they know that. Now you were known to be extremely close, the closest person to Yasser Arafat. How would you think Arafat would look at the situation in Palestine today? What would he advocate in Cairo, what would he tell Khaled Mashal? What would he tell uh, Abu Mazen? Say, I'm sure that uh, Arafat will say, "God, I'm glad I am not. I don't witness what's happening in Palestine now." Although, if Arafat was alive, this would never happen because he would have contained the whole situation. It, we, I'm sorry to say that in both, in both parties or on, on between Fatah and Hamas, they did not manage the crisis as well as if Yasser Arafat would have been there. It, it being done in a very bad way, especially I think the Israeli agents and the Israeli uh, connection is trying their best not to unify or not to, not to have the two uh, parties reconciliate. How does Israel control the political temperature in, in Palestine? Well, they they the occupy the occupier and they do their best. They so they have so many agents around and they know how to utilize and uh, how to manage and how to uh, uh, do the right things in order not to uh, for the two parties to unite. Do you think Khaled Mashal is because he's the more uh, controversial? Um, of the, of the two leaders of the two parties now. Do you think Khaled Mashal has a vision for a united Palestine that Palestinians can accept, that accepts Palestine's diversity? There's a great diverse group of people here um, where that, that, that deals with secularists and those people of faith. D does he speak to that? And what do, you, what do you think his world would look like? I hope, I hope, I have confidence that uh, he might manage to do that because of the diversity of uh, the Palestinians, because of the diversity of the religions there. He, he seems to me a moderate person, and he means well. Uh, sometimes they don't say, um, they don't say exactly uh, what you like to hear. Mm. Um, and, uh, but being optimist, I think in his heart, he want to have a reconciliation. He want to reconciliate. In the same token, I think Abu Mazen want to reconciliate. I know Abu Mazen more than Khalid Mishan because when I met um, Arafat in 1963, uh, he, t he 
Arafat, when my family visited him during the um, during the Hasar or during the um, thing in the Mukata, mm -hmm. he told him, "Your father and I formed Fatah, but I always told him, I am not Fatah. My party is Palestine, and he was insisting on me being Fatah. But at that time, Arafat." Fatah and Palestine was one. He managed mm -hmm. to have Palestine and Fatah and Yas Arafat talking the same thing, but it is not the, the case now. It being, if we are in this arena, we, we are facing the worst, the worst time of the Palestinian cause. Now. You know, in the, in the other day, Ephraim Snay of, uh, of Israel, uh, a former Labour Party member, um, wrote and a general. He was the governor of Nablus. Yeah, and he wrote that um, there is really no chance for Israel-Palestine uh, negotiations to go anywhere now. So he embraced Salam Fayyad and uh, his ideas for building out the economy, building out capacity, and putting all this sort of peace stuff on the side. Is that a viable route, or is this a way to yet again distract everyone from the importance of getting this global fault line fixed. Yeah, with my respect to Snay, to Ephraim Snay, I don't think he knows as well. The problem, uh, Stephen, is the society, the, uh, the ordinary Israeli, they don't know the Palestinians. Israel, they don't know the Palestinians. The Palestinians know the Israelis, but it is not reciprocal. Uh, they are afraid, they, they don't know, they don't want to know the Israelis. If the Israelis know us more, I think they will believe in a two-state solution. But because they don't know us, they are afraid, and they want to be afraid, and they create all these uh, stories about uh, Palestinians that, that we don't have a partner. They had a partner. Arafat was their partner. And Omazan tried his best to be the partner, but they don't want to partner. They, they, do, they want to have the whole cake right. and eat it. I'm, I'm sorry to say that, but... No, I appreciate course. that. I appreciate your candor. And, and in, the, uh, uh, in the case of the independent personalities which you had in this Cairo process... I want to cut you down a little bit yeah. and say, mm -hmm. for 42 years of my life, I've been working for a peaceful solution with the Israelis. I swear to God, 42 years of my life, I'm 75, mm -hmm. and for 42 years, I've been fighting and working and telling my family, the next two years is going to be the next two years, and after Sadat went there in 78, 79, I cried, and I thought, he's going to do it. The Israelis chickened out. They want to have the whole cake and eat it. They don't want to have peace. I don't know why. Some Israelis want, but the majority of the Israelis, they want to have peace. That's, I mean, Arafat always says, let's be brave and have peace. But they are not brave enough to do it. Rabin was. But after Rabin, we don't have leadership in Israel to say we'll have peace with the Palestinians. Let me ask you one last out-of-the-box question. Uh, today we have George Mitchell acting as an envoy. President Obama made this, this issue a, a, an issue for his administration from day one. Um, so he has a lot of presidential um, capital at stake, if you will, uh, if this goes nowhere. I don't know what George Mitchell's um, direction will look like, but recently in New York at the Clinton Global Initiative, I was reminded of how respected Bill Clinton is, both on the Israeli side and in the Palestinian broad Arab side. If someone like Bill Clinton were brought into this process, how do you think it would, do you think it would create opportunities you don't see today? I definitely do. I think uh, Bill Clinton has a lot of respectability and he knows the subject well and he dealt with Netanyahu and he dealt with the um, with Abu Mazen and he dealt with Arafat. I think he has a lot of credibility and he has um, a lot of charisma. And I will support uh, Mr. Clinton if he comes in. Uh, of course, Mr. Mitchell is doing his best, but the Israelis are not giving any any inch to it. And I, it's an, a great opportunity for President Obama's vision, and we are working so hard to make it a success, his vision. I hope he would, and I hope he can use uh, President Clinton's uh, uh, contacts and ability to come and uh, um, probably broke, uh, broke a peace between Arabs and uh, 
between Palestinians and uh, Israelis. So final, final question. Okay. If you do get a reconciliation deal between Fatah and Hamas in Cairo, and the United States does get its act together in moving Israel forward on some negotiations process, can Khaled Meshal and his party be constructive participants in that? Yes, definitely, because I heard it from Khaled Meshal. He's a realistic people. They are re realistic, and they said, we will, uh, we will uh, recognize 1967 border. We will respect uh, the 242 resolution. And I think he will be a player, because they're very pragmatic. But Khaled Mishan, he tells me what the administration gave to Yasser Arafat or to Abbasin. Nil, nothing. Why should we? So I, th I think any move <clears throat> from President Obama, I think he can bring a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of trust from everybody, and that's what we need to build trust, build mm. trust in with everybody who, to the vision of the Americans. Everybody like America, <clears throat> but we think that America is too much uh, leaning toward Israel on that thing. Unfortunately, and but we hope that America could be the champion for um, to bring peace between. Palestinians and Israelis. Well, Muni Masri, thank you for talking with our viewers at the Palestine Note and other outlets. Thanks so much welcome. for being here. And okay. good best of luck. Pleasure. Thank Pleasure. you. I hope to see